Hi, so this is Matt Rhodes and I'm joined by uh, Rotherham United player Matt Crooks and uh, Matt of course uh, is part of the uh, Jordan Sinnott Foundation Trust as well. Uh, Matt, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Just come off the back of a 2-1 defeat to Everton but um, all things considered I'm alright and looking forward to the new year. Good, good. Uh, yeah, lucky on uh, on Saturday against Everton was a good game. Um, yeah, so we're going to be, uh, well, instead, instead of looking at the Millers, uh, we're going to be uh, sort of looking specifically at the Jordan Sinnott Foundation Trust. Um, obviously, we all know the um, circumstances in which uh, this all arose, but um, what we'll be sort of looking at uh, just first of all is just for anyone that um, doesn't know too much about the trust and isn't aware of um, sort of how close you were to Jordan Sinnott, um, just sort of how did you end up uh, becoming uh, becoming acquainted with him and how you ended up becoming friends? Um, well, when we were both 14 and 15, we both uh, ended up joining Huddersfield Town Academy at the, at the same time. It was pretty much the same week. Um, Dean Windass brought him in, I think, at the time because Josh was there and uh, he came into trade and I'd just been released from a, a different club. So I, I joined there as it was 10 minutes from my house. Um, and then for the first couple of weeks I didn't really like him because he was showing me up every week in training <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I'd be going there as a, as the best player but he quickly proved otherwise um, but no, uh, as I got to know him and his personality we uh, quickly became friends and um, kind of come full circle really as a relationship um, in football terms anyway because we both ended up getting released on the same day as well so <laughs> it was kind of a Pretty much a, a full stint together the whole way through. Yeah, go, going through the ups and downs of a, of a football career, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, so obviously, in, in regards to um, uh, January of last year, and obviously with uh, the circumstances in, uh, in what happened, um, we saw something called the um, Shirts for uh, Jordan Appeal, uh, not, not really long at all after... Uh, he passed away and um, it sort of really built up uh, particularly uh, on Matlock Town's first game uh, after uh, uh, Jordan passed away uh, where a lot of the Matlock Town players and a lot of people there at Causeway Lane were wearing uh, Sinnott 25 shirts and um, a lot of the ground was just filled uh, in and out uh, sort of like in the, um, uh, the bar at the stadium as well of Jordan Sinnott shirts from all different yeah. clubs, not just from from England, all all around the world, not not even just football, all all different sports as well. Um, and yeah. just first of all, just sort of how uh, how quickly was it that this um, that this kind of all came about with the shirts for Jordan Finks? It was such a lovely thing, and then. Um, how that kind of became the spur for uh, the Jordan Sinnott Foundation Trust to become a thing and to start doing some charity work. Yeah, uh, well, I think, well, on my person, personal side for me, I said to my girlfriend pretty quickly that I'd like to do something for him, not knowing what it would be um, and not knowing it would become a fully-fledged charity and foundation, but I was always keen to do something and to, to carry his name on. Um, but with regards to shirts for Jordan, it was incredible. Um, I think a couple of days after um, he passed away, the WhatsApp group got started. There about 50 people in there. And two hours maybe it took to get all 92 Football League clubs, just with the contacts that we had and the people that we could speak to. Um, and me personally, I just threw myself in head first. I wanted to just get as many as I could it was something to take my mind off it really mm. and um, there were so many people doing so many amazing things with regards to the shirts and then obviously we created the Twitter, Twitter um, page and then that made it 10 times bigger and in the end there was over 900 shirts which is quite incredible really I mean um, walking to the funeral and seeing them all strung up was I had to go to the toilet and have a moment because it was all right knowing that we had that many shirts, but seeing them there hung up, it was just, um, yeah, it was it was emotional. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember um, seeing a photograph of um, all the shirts just uh, 
incredibly moving seeing all the shirts there all together and just showed just mm-hmm. uh, the enormity of um, of just how many yeah. uh, football clubs and other sports teams got involved with it. Um, yeah. But in terms of the work that it's done, because uh, I think I'm right in saying a lot of the shirts were auctioned off and a lot of these shirts have now been sent off uh, to different parts of the world. Um, can you just go into a little bit of detail about what happened I think shortly before Christmas Day, where I think some of the uh, Jordan Sinnott shirts were uh, moved over to um, Africa, and some of the yeah, that's right, yeah, and some shirts uh, were finally sort of uh, given to people there. Uh, and uh, I think there was a little bit of a tournament that took place on Christmas Eve with everyone wearing a Sinnott shirt. Yeah, so um, it's been difficult with the pandemic. Um, trying to get the shirts to the people that need them and who want to give them to. Um, but we work closely with Kit Aid over lockdown. Um, a fellow called Derek Williams, who's the founder of that charity, they've um, been really good with us, and uh, we managed to build a partnership with them. They knew of a charity called FOMO in Malawi, <clears throat> and um, we thought we'd do like a little test run to try and get seventy out there before we send a load more. Um, so we sent seventy in, in two boxes, and on Christmas Eve they had a memorial tournament in his name, and um, the four semi finalists so all the players that were in the, those teams took home the shirts so they played in the first and then the four, the, the four semi finalists of the tournament got to take the shirts home so um, obviously you saw the videos and the, the images online and it was like the perfect Christmas present really for, for us a lot seeing that it was obviously I said seeing them in the in the uh, like where the funeral was held was emotional, but seeing the video of the people wearing them and playing in them was something totally different. Yeah, and then um, I uh, understand as well the uh, Foundation Trust now has uh, a website quite recently uh, launched. I think that was just before Christmas as well. And um, because obviously it doesn't uh, stop there uh, with the work that's been done with the uh, Shirts for Jordan uh, campaign. Um, I think there's now a few events that are on the website. What sort of um, what are the foundation trust looking to do for uh, 2021 and onwards? We want to make this charity as big as possible. We want to help as many possible uh, people as possible as possible we can. Um, I, I've said a few times now that I want this charity to be as big as his character was, which was massive, and I want it to embody everything about him. Um, so we want to help people through sports. Um, and there could be vulnerable people preferably between 5 and 21 I think our criteria is and we have a queer, um, a form on the on the website that you can fill in if you feel like that you could you could be, um, be of some use from the money that we could be able to give to you through a grant um, it could be for individuals, for teams um, I, I think people that maybe couldn't afford to go on a school trip for example a sporting school trip, something like that or a team that needs some footballs or an individual that can't afford some football boots or whatever. It could be for a netball team, whatever, something like that. Um, they're the kind of people and teams that we want to help. Um, and like I say, on the, char- on the charity website as well, we have um, upcoming events that are taking place and also uh, shirts that are being auctioned off and other items such as uh, we've got an Anthony Joshua signed uh, boxing glove, stuff like that. We've got, we've got loads of... Um, stuff that will be given away in due course over the course of the year. Okay, and uh, well, <laughs> this 2020-21 uh, campaign uh, for, for any team, whether it's in the Premier League or Step 10 of non-league football, it's uh, a very, very strange league and obviously it's still uh, not really anywhere quite near to normal. Um, but if um, the 2021-22 campaign, uh, when that gets underway, um, and hopefully if enough people are vaccinated then and uh, you can actually get decent sized crowds. Um, I know there was a little bit of talk uh, for the start of last season of maybe doing like possibly a testimonial game or like a little mini tournament with some of Jordan's uh, old clubs. Um, w- would you be interested um, if obviously things are okay again around July, August time of um, doing something like a like a friendly match in Jordan's name, or like a mini tournament featuring some of Jordan's old clubs, where the money could go to the Foundation Trust, possibly. One hundred percent, I think it's a brilliant idea. Obviously, it's a shame that 
coronavirus is obviously being prominent in everyone's lives and everything's got to take a back seat at the minute, especially football. So um, I did see that um, the tournament was possibly going to be taking place. I think it was at Chesterfield, Alf- Alfreton and Matt Locke, was it? That's kind of, I heard a little bit of talk, but then I think with the the difficulty, yeah. what was happening with COVID, I think yeah, it had to be shelved for a little bit, yeah. Yeah, well, I think if anyone deserved a tournament in the name, he'd be at the very top of the list. So hopefully, um, how it be that those clubs can put their heads together and and uh, try and organise something, and we'd be more than willing to help as a as a charity and to to promote it and to help out if necessary. Um, but no, I think it's a it's a brilliant idea, and I know a lot of those clubs that have played with him or know of him to other people would would be a uh, proud to be a part of it. Yeah, no, uh, if, even if it was just uh, one friendly game between uh, two of uh, Jordan's former clubs, it kind of needs to be a match where, you know, a full a, a full proper crowd... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Needs, needs, to be a, needs to be a party for one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time, Matt. Uh, I know you're a busy no problem. man. No so, Yeah, thank you very much and for... Uh, all the work that you're doing for the foundation trust because it's absolutely fantastic and uh, best of luck uh, for the rest of the season with the Millers. Thank you. My pleasure talking talking with us. Thanks for uh, getting that out there.